is another topic you did in grade 11, solving quadratic inequalities. And it's very similar to solving a quadratic equation. In fact, you start off by finding out where they equal. So if I had x squared plus 9 equals 25, that's not hard to solve. You know how to solve quadratic equations. This one, you'd probably move the 16, I mean the 9 over to the other side to make 16. Then what would you do? Just solve for x. Square root both sides. Ask yourself, did I remember the plus or minus? Or did I just do the 4? That's a quadratic equation. A quadratic inequality is asking, what numbers make this less than or equal to 25? 4 and negative 4 make it equal to 25. But can you tell me a value that also works that makes it less than? Or tell me a value that doesn't work. In other words, plug something in, you're going to be right no matter what. You're either going to find something that's true or not true. Who wants to be the first volunteer to say one that either works or doesn't work? When plugging in things, I would say choose numbers for x that are easy rather than hard. Don't start off with 35.87 and try to square that in your head. Maybe start off with 0 or 1. What happens if you plug in 0? Does 0 make this true? Yes. 0 would be another solution. What about 1? Can you tell me a number that makes it not true? 6. 6 squared plus 9 is not less than or equal to 25. So we get a sense of where some things work and some things don't. Okay? Now, how did you solve this back in grade 11? Well, your grade 11 teacher would have said, once you found out where it's equal, and that's what I did here, 4 and negative 4, draw a number line and put 4 and negative 4 on it. You might remember sometimes you did open circles, sometimes you filled them in. Do you remember doing that? When did you use an open circle? When did you fill them in? Yeah, if there wasn't the equal sign, it would just be an open circle. Because it could equal, you filled them in to say, those are possible answers. And then we wrote things that were true and false. And you found out what was true and false by basically doing what I did to begin with. I said, what happens when I plug in 0? Did it work? Is it true? Yes. Where is 0? Zero? 0 happens to be between negative 4 and 4. And if you find that between negative 4 and 4, one value works, everything works between there. So what's another value between negative 4 and 4? 1. Can you see if you plug in 1, it's still true. 2. 2 squared plus 9, 13. Perfect, still works. 3, still works. Even those ugly decimals, 2.25, you plug it in, it would work, even though the mental math would be harder. Okay? Someone plugged in 6, said it didn't work. That means that whole section doesn't work. Plug in 10, doesn't work. Plug in 100, definitely doesn't work. And same thing here, plug in something less than negative 4. Plug in negative 6. What happens when you square negative 6? You get positive 36 again, plus 9. It doesn't work. So we get this section to be false. And so what we write as our solution is that x is between 4 and negative 4. And it can equal them as well because we had an equal sign and our dots were filled in to begin with. Okay. Now, one of the things that we do in pre-calculus all the way through 
is we try to understand what's happening. And sometimes we understand it with algebra. This solution we did was all with algebra. But we also have the ability to graph as well. And can you see if I rearranged this equation by subtracting the 25 on both sides, I would get x squared minus 16 less than or equal to 0. Can you see how I got from here to here? It's not this one yet. All good? If you graphed y equals x squared minus 16, can you see that that's a parabola? Shifted down 16 units. The beautiful thing about this parabola is that the x-intercepts are 4 and negative 4. Those match up with our solution on our number line here. In fact, this number line that we do as a solution for algebra corresponds to the number line that you make if you graphed it. What did we graph? We graphed y equals x squared minus 16. What is this question asking? It's asking when is x squared minus 16 less than or equal to 0? And what is x squared minus 16 equal to? It's equal to y. So you're asking yourself, when is y less than or equal to 0? Isn't it super easy to see here that all your y values are negative? You could say that that section is true instantly from the graph and then be done solving it that way as well. I actually, sometimes I'm like, ooh, if I graph this, it's a positive x squared. This would be my parabola. Obviously, it's going to be less than 0 here. True, false, false. And I think of it that way. Okay? That's not something, I'm not sure you always saw that when you did grade 11, whether your teacher showed you the graphical part as well as the algebra part but they make sense working together. So now let's look at our second one. Is it okay if I erase this? Oh well, I did. I can undo it. Does anyone still need it? Okay. Whew. For the second one, x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0, uh, is greater than 0. Well, first of all, wow, can't make x's to go. Make it equal to 0 and solve. Well, we could factor this one, x plus 3x minus 2. So x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 2. Draw your number line. We'll just do the algebra first. Label negative 3, label 2. Should I fill these circles in? Not this time, because it's just greater than. So again, try a test value. I love using 0, because the math is super easy. What's 0 plus 0 minus 6? That's minus 6. Is it bigger than 0? No. So this section would be false. What if I try something bigger than 2? OK. I try 3. 9 plus 3 is 12. Minus 6 is 6. Is that bigger than 0? True. I try something less than negative 3. Negative 4. 16 minus 4 is 12. Minus 6 is 6. Bigger than 0? Yes. True. OK. Graphically, here's our graph. Which way does this parabola open? It opens up. Draw your x-intercepts of 2 and negative 3 opening up. Can you see that it's only bigger than 0 here and here? That matches up with those two true statements we had before. Okay. And what do we get as a result? Our solution is that x is less than negative 3, not equal to this sign, because we didn't have equals in the question, and we 
Remember that with the open circles. And then you write, or x could have been bigger than 2. In interval notation, you'd write this as negative infinity up to negative 3. There's your or symbol, and 2 to infinity. Now, the reason that we're doing this as a warm-up to composition of functions is because in this section, they want to connect what we learned about square root graphs in Chapter 2, compositions now in Chapter 4, and quadratic inequalities back in Grade 11. just a little bit of foreshadowing of what's going to happen. You're going to be looking at something like that. Notice I just took this equation, x squared plus x minus 6, and put it inside of a square root. That's a composition of functions because the parabola is now inside of a square root function. That makes it a composition of functions. What do you know about square root functions? You can only take a square root of a positive number. Okay. So what do we need? We're going to need the inside to be bigger than 0. Does that make sense? Well, when does that happen? We would have to solve this quadratic inequality to find out that it only works here and here if we wanted to find the domain. Right? So we could say for sure that up on the shelf in the never, ever, ever box, there would be a 0. Don't ever put that into that function, because then you would square root a negative. So this is the warm-up. This is where we're going to. But now we take a step back and look at some easier things. So we'll do the construct the understanding together as well. Identify the domain and range of f of x. Identify the domain and range of g of x. Complete the table, then graph the composition on the same function. Check your work with plugging in your values. Hopefully your understanding of composition was good there. Yes, it is odd that a couple of them are undefined. When we look at the graphs in the end, okay, now all we would have for the green graph is we know this is 0 and 0. At negative 1 and 1, we have root 3. And at 0, we have 2. And anything bigger than 2 or less than negative 2 didn't work. Okay, so the green graph, I don't know if it's easy to see that exact curve to it, but this is the equation that we end up with. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to show you in this question is that we can come up with an equation for the green graph. Okay. The equation, the explicit equation for f of g of x would equal f of, well, if I plug in x into g, I get x squared minus 1. Are you OK that I've replaced g of x with x squared minus 1? Because these are the big ideas for this unit, how functions work. When I'm writing the composition of functions with x's, I now, instead of writing g of x, said, well, I know that g of x is equal to x squared minus 1. So if I want to write the explicit equation, I replace g of x with x squared minus 1. Now I want to find out what f of x is. Well, f of x says whatever you plug in, plug it in again there. So I'm going to have this equal to a square root of 3 minus x. Well, what did I plug in? I plugged in an x squared minus 1. If I simplify this, 
I'm going to get the square root of negative x squared, 3 minus 1 plus 4. So you know how before I said we're going to combine a bunch of units together? This is how we combine a bunch of those units together. First of all, could you graph negative x squared plus 4? Right? It's a parabola opening down, shifted up four units. One, two, three, four. Would have a vertex at 0 comma 4, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 3. Remember graphing parabolas. It has x-intercepts at 2 and negative 2. Now from your square root unit, how do we take square roots of any function? What were the key things? First of all, you could only do square roots of positives. So we're only going to look at this section of the graph. We tried to do square roots of nice numbers. Can you see that you can do the square root of 0? That's 0. What's the square root of 4? 2. Wherever your y value was equal to 1, Remember those points didn't change? And do you remember between 0 and 1, your blue graph would have to be slightly above? And then whenever your y values were bigger than 1, it was below? So now I just used algebra to come up with this section of the graph. First we used a table of values to get that section of the graph, and now I've used algebra and our previous chapters to get that section of the graph. Okay? Does math do this often? Yes. It says you need to use what you learned in four different units for this one question. And what happens to you often? Oh, I wish I would have learned that unit better because I don't remember. I'm good on two of the four units. Well, that doesn't really help you on a question where you need to know all four of them. But math will do this often, says you need to connect your ideas in all of your units together. Okay? And where did that quadratic inequalities come in? We know that the inside of this equation has to be bigger than or equal to 0. So if you solve this, you would get x squared equals 4, which is x equals plus or minus 2. Draw your number line, negative 2 and 2. Solid circles, find out this section's true false, false, but we can see that in the graph as well, that your domain only works from negative 2 to 2. In this unit, I actually, or in this section, I actually find that doing these two things, part 1 and part 2, we've actually done almost entirely all the questions and more. We've learned the most important parts now, okay? Those important parts were, okay, how do you find an explicit equation? And once you have that explicit equation, how do you use all of these topics from different units to combine them to see what it looks like graphically? So now that we've done the complicated stuff, let's go to example one, which is easier.